again everyone um, and today we're going to do the uh, stock module demonstration okay so we're logging in again as uh, admin UK and our connection is over the local area network uh, on the internet okay and we're using the demo corporation okay so sign in okay so we're going to go to the inventory module okay the layout <clears throat> if you uh, have looked at the other demo videos on the other modules is exactly the same we've got new got find got tools we've got a workflow menu yeah we've got the dashboards okay um, so let's start <coughs> uh, on a new item okay now the stock items consist of normal stock items non stock items so obviously non stock items are not going to keep track of uh, stock quantities or a kind of stock ledger um, item matrix. This is where we have um, lots of attributes. For example, T-shirts, uh, which we showed uh, selling some T-shirts in the actual sales order in the customer uh, demo, uh, where we can have sizes and colours as a matrix, sizes and styles and colours. Um, kits, uh, where we can actually specify a, a kit, a, a kit configurations for like, like a computer, for example. Uh, you could say, well, what motherboard do you want? What RAM do you want? Uh, what kind of hard disk do you want um, and then it kind of makes up the item uh, okay we've got assembly items so these th these are things that we do actually sell as a whole as a finished product but we have underneath it components so we can actually take out the components out of stock and put the finished item into stock and obviously cost that finished item it's not manufacturing by any stretch of the imagination but it is a way of let's say manufacturing items and then telling the system you've manufactured the items so it kind of issues all the components Okay, so let's create a normal stock item to begin with. Okay, it's asking me for an item code. If I want the system to generate the item code for me, I can just bypass that. Okay, and then I put in a description. Um, and what we'll do is we'll call this example stock item. Okay, I've also got an extended description. Okay, where I can type whatever I want. Um, I can also, uh, up here, if you notice, we've got um, a templates and class codes um, this puts in the defaults behind this particular type of item so we may have defaults for stock items we may have defaults for uh, matrix items uh, and we might have uh, it, it's just if I double click on that it'll actually drill down to sort of say what's the default unit of measure for stock items what's our you know usual you know, category codes manufacturers all this type of stuff so when I actually create the item it'll default default all that information in for me Okay, the next thing is who's the manufacturer? So obviously I can ha I can do a <clears throat> a list of uh, you know user-defined manufacturers. Sales tax option. Do I want the sales tax to come from the customer or the item? Okay, so <clears throat> the logic behind this is, if I'm in the UK and I'm selling to UK customers, <clears throat> okay, and I specify on the item that I'm selling I want it to come from the item, then it will actually use the tax code that I specify on the item. For example, uh, children's clothes, they're zero rated uh, tax. So <clears throat> on children's clothes, I could have uh, the tax code specified. Uh, on other items, I can have, uh, I, I can not specify it. Um, <clears throat> but if I'm selling to, let's say, someone in France, okay, then it would ignore my settings on here, okay, and it would, and it would use the default tax code on the customer account, effectively because, you know, I'm always going to use, let's say, EC sales to a business in France. Uh, it doesn't matter whether, you know, from my point of view, where it's taxable or non-taxable, I'm always going to charge EC sales as the tax code. Okay, so there's the sales tax option logic. Uh, is it commissionable? Do we actually pay commission to our sales rep or agent on this item? Um, commodity code, you know, for obviously our interest at from the from the EU point of view, and stock take days. How how often do we actually want to stock take this item? So if I put seven days in there, what it'll do is um, I can actually run a stock take based on overdue items. So I can, so I so it may it, it ensures that I stock take stuff regularly. Okay, so the next page is what units of measure do I want? I've got a default unit of measure. I can actually change that default unit of measure to something else if I wanted to. And I can obviously pick other units of measure, like a dozen, let's say. Um, on the actual item, it puts 12 in there. But if I wanted to specify a different quantity, I could. Okay, so for example, dozens for this item could be 14s or 15s, let's say. Yeah, um, I can also specify, let's say, I don't know, kilograms and actually put a fraction of a unit of measure. So I could say, well, it's a 0.5. 
Okay, I can also specify different weights and net weights and volumes for each type of unit of measure as well. I can pick categories that I want to put this item into, let's say the motherboard. I can also put subcategories. I can put them into departments. Whoops. Um, okay. Now I can decide on the costing method, and in sta the standard version we have average, standard, FIFO or LIFO. Okay, um, and here I can I can kick off an average price, I can kick off a standard price, and I can kick off a last price. And obviously, when I next order one, it'll override the last cost and it will recalculate the average. We made a lot of effort here to make sure that the average. Uh, never goes negative. It is only updated by uh, the actual uh, purchase invoice or bill. Um, okay, th this is where we can specify suppliers uh, if we want to. Uh, so I'm going to say that supplier and that supplier is the people we usually buy this item from. The lead time is usually, let's say, two days and four days from them. That's my priority one supplier, so that will always be my main supplier. The cost price from that supplier is 199, let's say. Yeah, the cost price from that one is that one. Okay. So what it's saying to me now is, what pricing methods do you want to set up for this item? So if I just say I just want a wholesale and a retail price, I can just type it in. Yeah, 100 um, and 200 and a retail price of 300. Now, I don't know if you notice, this message that's coming up, it says, do you want to calculate the other currency prices? So if I say yes, it'll take the, ex the exchange rate at this moment in time, times the 300 by, I don't know, what's it, 1.5 for the euro and whatever the dollar rate is. Okay, but I can actually specify separate uh, amounts for the do for, for in dollars as opposed to that, and not update the the the, the other figures. <clears throat> now, listed here in this system are all 250 odd currencies of the world. Okay, but in setup, you decide which currencies you actually want to show when you're setting up pricing. So obviously, we've got specified here, you know, pounds and euros and dollars. Yeah, whoops. Okay. Okay, so that's that's what only appears here, the pound, the euro, and the dollar. And obviously that's our base currency there. Now, there are other ways, okay, um, of specifying sales prices. So it could be a fixed amount on a pricing cost, and the pricing cost can be a pricing cost that you tell your salespeople that's your cost, but it you know it might be an inflated cost price or a fixed amount on last cost. Now the good thing about that is uh, it, that if you kind of want to say I want a particular margin or a particular you know percentage mark upon last cost price, when you when the last cost changes, so your selling prices or you can just say, no, I just want to make a profit margin of whatever on it. So if I say, right, mark upon last cost price, I should just do a mark upon the pricing cost because you can see it easily there. Okay, yep. Yeah. So I'm going to say my pricing cost is 200 and I want to increase this by £10. Okay, so it's 210 If I did a percentage, a mark upon the pricing cost, it would now change that to 10%. So 10% of that. Yeah, is that? And if I said I wanted 50% to make up the retail price, you can see how that's made up. Okay. All right. So that's creating a stock item. This is the actual stock item record. Okay. Now, the different types of stock item, like the matrix item and the kit item, all that's really different about them is they have different tabs. So, like the kit item would have a kit, you know, uh, tab, and the matrix item would have a matrix tab. So this is a kind of normal stock item, okay? We can have uh, photos, okay? And so if I double click that, I can pick an image um, from from my you know from my image files. Um, I can have custom fields. I can see recent transactions, and I can see the stock information like <clears throat> in stock, committed, free stock, what's on back order, what's on purchase order, what's in transit from other warehouses, and what's in my other locations, because. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay. There I can see my item description, obviously, and my extended description. And one of the things about this system is it's multilingual. Okay, so because it's also linked to the e commerce site. So on the e commerce site, if you said I wanted to see the site in French or German or whatever it is, you can specify the languages that you actually want to use. Okay, so we've only specified the UK and the US, which are going to be almost the same anyway. But you specify what selling languages down here you want to see. So, for example, there's the UK. 
Okay, so if I now go to the US and change this and put US on the end of here and say OK, when I look at the, U, the, the U, United Kingdom one, it won't have that on there. So what we can, what we can do is because we can have separate data and descriptions yeah, for each particular type of language. If I click apply to all descriptions and I change this and said OK, oops, I'll tick that perhaps, let's see. Okay, and then when I go to look at the US one, it'll be the same because I've ticked that. Okay, all right, so in setup now, there's that sales tax option we just discussed when we were going through the wizard. Commodity code that will default in when we're doing the interest stat. Is it commissionable? Um, landed costs is going to be is, is in, adv in the advanced system. Yeah, the fields are here, but essentially they don't do anything in this um, in the standard version. Um, default lead time obviously which you know is a default lead time but when we look at the actual suppliers that's when we can actually see individual supplier lead times um, if I did a, if I could tick that box there for drop ship and then I did a sales order for this item when I actually do the sales order item line it would automatically put in that we usually drop ship this item and then someone would have to untick it if they wanted to sell it from stock Okay, we have categories, we have departments, we have accessory items and substitute items, and there's our units of measure. Okay, so on the costing front, this is our suppliers that we that we picked in the in the wizard, and again where we can drill down and actually specify different um, cost prices per unit of measure if we wanted to, because it may be that we buy um, a, a, be a better rate for cases than we do um, each, let's say. Pricing, this is the selling prices set up warehouses um, and an item ledger this tells me all the ins and outs um, that, are, that are going on and we have a web option okay so this is all to do with e-commerce and if you click show on web the next time you refresh your web page it will automatically be there <clears throat> this system's totally integrated it's one database one look and feel one business logic so you you, you set up your item here you tick that you refresh your web page it's there. There's no synchronization between the two. It's there. Um, okay, so, so you can see that this is all to do with the setup of you know keywords, page titles, um, what summary information do you want, and you've got a full HTML editor here, so you can type in normal type, then say OK and save it, and that's what the description that will appear on the website. Okay, so you can see images. Um, you yeah. know. Okay. One nice feature about this is sometimes people get their stock codes wrong, okay, or they want to change them. So we have a, a, an option here to rename the actual item code. Um, so that, and that will go across all the data, all the database. Okay, so let's save and close. All right, so that was a, that was a new stock item, okay. So let's quickly move to kind of creating a new item matrix, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this um, exe. Um, I'll let, I'll let the system generate it and I'll call this example t shirt. Okay, so I'll say next. Everything's the same apart from when we get to this bit here. Okay, so what we're saying is what's the, what's the prefix? So I'm going to call this t shirt. Okay, and then what it's going to say is what attributes do you want to use? Okay, well, I want to use color and size, and obviously these are user definable, so you just specify as many as you want and whatever attributes in each one you want. So the next thing it's going to say is for color, which colors do you want? And obviously these are all used definable as well, but I put red, white and blue in. So I'll say okay. And what sizes would you like to use in matrix? So I'm going to say, well, I want them all. Okay. Then what it does is <clears throat> it multiplies them all together and comes up with all the combinations. So you can see that you've got blue, large, blue, medium, blue, small, blue, extra large, the same with red and same with white. Obviously, if I say next, it says what costing method do you want to run on these? Do you want any start off, um, you know, um, average cost, starting co standard cost, or last cost? And uh, your pricing, I'm going to say finish. And what it'll do is it'll generate the matrix group here. Um, and when I say save, it'll generate all the individual stock items that make it up. So you can see I've got an extra tab here for item matrix. And this, and this is all the attributes that I picked. I can add new ones to it if I want to, and the items. I can generate new ones if I wanted to. Okay, so that's a matrix type item. 
So let's create another one and let's do a kit. Okay, so this kit we're going to call example kit. Okay. Okay, so the difference now is that some of the tabs have disappeared, but we have a tab for kit details. And we decide whether we price this by kit or the items, individual items, and, what, and obviously what currency this, this, this relates to. So I'm going to do a computer, okay? Uh, th this kit's a computer, let's say. So I'm going to say, right, uh, I'm going to call this motherboard. Okay, this is where I put the description. So when people are actually kind of selling these or looking at these, and it says, you know, the, on the kit configurator, um, you know, what's the question you want to prompt the user with? So I'm going to say, what motherboard? Okay, I can put an image there as well. When I'm actually in the configurator. So if I click on this, I can say, right, well, uh, let's have um, opportunity. Now, if your images are too big, it will resize them for you. So I'll say yes, and it will resize it. Okay. You can also decide whether it's required, optional, or multi-select. So, for example, uh, you might have five items here, yeah, uh, that are op that are options of motherboards. And you, uh, but, and, and you, and what you if, if I say it's required, then you've got to have picked one of them. If it's optional, you don't have to you don't have to pick any of them. If it's multi-select, you know, maybe that you, you've got software as a as an option, which is kind of Office or Enterprise Suite or whatever it might be, and you could kick you could tick three or three or three out of three. Yeah, or you could pick none of them. Okay, so I say this is required, um, and this is where I pick some items. Ignore what I'm picking, but essentially these would be the motherboards options. Okay, and I have to pick a default, and these are the sale prices that are pulled in from the actual record. Um, so at, at this moment in time, when I look at the configurator, it would be, it would just show um, the, you know, th they're all the same price. I want to change that one to ten. And I'm going to change that one to 20. So when I looked at, when I look at it in the configurator, it will say that one's less 20 pounds, that one's less 10 pounds. Yeah, um, and that one's my uh, a default one. Okay, pricing type. Okay, the price the, the uh, just coming back to the pricing type for a minute. Uh, if I said kit price, what happens is the the kit price um, is made up of the items. Okay, so, so so you could say right, the kit price of this is 100, and it automatically goes over the individual items and sort of uh, distributes that 100 pounds across it. Um, if I go item price, what will happen is it'll put it, uh, on the actual invoice. Yeah, it'll put the individual items that make up this kit with the prices on them. Uh, it's just an option. You know, a lot of people do kit prices. They sell a kit for a price, but it's made up of obviously the items and, and, the, and the individual items from a sales point of view. So you can see that we've only got one item on this kit at the moment, and that is 100% of the cost. Okay, now if I add a new item, okay, let's say RAM. Okay, so uh, what uh, RAM? <laughs> Careful how you spell that. What RAM? Okay, and obviously these are all the RAM options. Ignore what I'm picking. And I say that's the default. Now, if I save that, what you'll what you'll see is that it's changed that to 50, okay? Because between that item and this item, the cost is made up of 50% in RAM and 50% in the motherboard, okay? So essentially, it's 30 pounds each, okay? So if you so 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 the kit price would be 60, okay? But, uh, if we went to sell this, if I change that 60 pounds to 50 pounds, what it would do is it would put 25 pounds against that item and 25 pounds against that item when you actually look at it in the actual order itself. It's just so you, it's just so you can reallocate the, the the sales the sales values. Okay, so that's, so that's that's a kit item, um, effectively. Uh, I think it might be worth just coming out of there and going into customer, even though I've shown this in the customer demo. Yeah, let's just do a quick order. Okay, to this particular customer, and pick on those items. Okay, so let's do I don't know kit. Let's pick on that kit I just did. That's the one I did, even though the one the other example there's better, but never mind. So you can see that there's the items. Okay, actually that's the one I actually made up earlier. Okay, so I'm just going to say okay, and I'm going to pick on that other one. 
which is that one. So, you know, I'm not cheating. OK, so it's a kit price. It's in at 60. OK, so you can see that that's less 20. So if I picked on that one, it would change the overall price down to 40. So if I added 10 pounds to it, it'd go back to 50, including the price. So you can see that I say, what motherboard, what RAM? You know, it, you, you can configure it. And when I say OK, it'll drop that item in and you can actually see the components that make it up. So a kit price is on the invoice. It will have one of example kit 50 pounds. If I did individual price, yeah, rather than kit price, then it would show the individual items that make up the kit, one at 20, one at 30. So you can see how it redistributed the 50 pounds across the actual items. OK, so let's, let's look at a matrix item. Matrix. Uh, <clears throat> OK, there's that example T-shirt I did. OK, so by picking that, what happens is it pops up a matrix. Yeah, so everything in red is out of stock. Just it's just warning me that's out of stock. I can still take an order for it. Yeah, um, so if I say right, they want ten large uh, blue, okay, and they want uh, ten red medium, okay. Um, I can put a sales price in there because I obviously didn't put type any sales prices in either. So I'll put them in at pound each, okay. So what you can see now is that it's popped in those T-shirts for me that I picked, okay. OK, let's go back to inventory and we'll just create one more item, which is an assembly item, just so you can see it. OK, so I'm going to call this example assembly. OK, if I could spell assembly item. OK, and usual sort of stuff. But this, the only difference is with this one is you've got to pick the components. So I'm going to say it's one of them, one of them, two of them, three of them, whatever. OK, so there's the items. I'm going to say it's 10 of those. It's 20 of those, and the rest can be ones. And I'm going to put some instructions in here that sort of says, uh, screw this to that, etc. All right, so I say next. What do I want to use? Uh, it's automatically calculated an average cost based on the average cost of all the components and the standard cost and the last cost. OK, so I'm going to say next. Next, finish. Then it'll bring up this actual assembly item. You can see you've got an assembly tab now with the actual quantities in. So you can see the average cost is £10 of that item. So 10 times the quantity needed, 10 times £10 is 100. The standard cost of that is the same, so you can see it's all multiplied out for you. OK. Right. Warehouse. I'm not going to create a new warehouse, but we'll go and have a look at an existing warehouse. OK, so I've got two set up. OK, so if I go to the main warehouse. You can decide, obviously, you can have, um, well in the standard version, you can have two warehouses. In the advanced version, you can have as many warehouses as you like. Um, obviously, you can call them whatever you like. It's got a 30 character code and obviously a, a massive notepad description. You can have got addresses, custom fields, recent history going through that warehouse. You can have contacts at that warehouse, notes, activities, and emails. Um, uh, the main thing is obviously the locations. Um, in standard, the locations are fixed to nine types of locations, uh, nine bins effectively. But in the advanced version, you can have as many bins as you like. Yeah, and you can also have a, a, a bin generation routine. Okay, so we've got a normal bin type. OK, um, now these are, for example, if you did drop ship, you sold a drop ship item. It doesn't go into normal stock and out of normal stock. It goes into the drop. If you do a goods received, it goes into the drop ship bin. Yeah. And when you actually invoice it, it goes out the drop ship bin. The reason is so it doesn't affect your normal selling stock. Because if you think you've got 10 in stock that you can sell, yeah, what you don't want is if you've done a GRN for a drop ship item for one, let's say, the stock showing as 11. So effectively, anything that's not in a normal location is looked at from a um, from a kind of warehouse point of view um, as uh, in the other location. OK, um, same with returns to suppliers. Let's say you do a return to a supplier um, you know, that takes stock out. 
yeah and it puts it into a particular location so you know that you, the stock is still yours but you've sent it to a supplier okay and stuff that you might have moved from your normal locations to defective or repair you don't want to be selling that stock because there might be something wrong with it okay but you obviously it is part of your stock and it is part of your stock valuation so look at my stock totals for this warehouse i can see for all these items yeah that i've got 31 in stock I've got 1,200 committed, I've got negative stock, okay, because obviously I've got, in this system, ignore stock levels turned on. I could see if there's any on back order, I could see if there's any on purchase order, I could see if there's any in transit from other warehouses and potential stock. And I could see anything that at uh, the other locations, the ones that I don't sell from, so I can see location four, I've got five in there, okay, defective. But if I look at in stock, where are they? Yeah, effectively, the 100 are in the normal. Um, for 14 committed to sales orders. Well, which sales orders are they? And when are they due? Um, okay. And I can also see in setup for each item, I can see what's the usual reorder point. How, how, when do I want to stock take them? Every 10 days, not bothered. Uh, and in the advanced, you've got a preferred pick location, a preferred put away location. So when you're doing goods in, it'll put default to that location. If you're uh, picking them on a, on a picky note, your default location to pick those particular goods. Okay, so that's warehouse setup. So let's go into an item I've already got. Let's say this one here. And um, let's look at the item ledger we didn't have any information on last time. So I can see here that um, an invoice takes an item, uh, takes one out, yeah, um, and it tells me who uh, I actually sold it to. Um, so let's kind of have a look and see all dates. This month. Okay, so I can see that I've got a GRN here, okay, for five. And they've all been sold effectively because there's none left in stock. And there I can see that the confirmed cost was £10. The un so the unconfirmed cost was £10 and the confirmed cost was £10. Um, and that was from that Abrexas company. If I double click on the GRN, it actually takes me to the GRN that you know it was part of. And if I double click on there, it'll actually give me the bill information that relates to that GRN as well. Okay. So let's come out of there. And... Stock adjustments are just for kind of adjusting stock in and out. I'll show you a very quick one. So this is in. It could be out. Um, let's pick on one of those. So we're going to adjust some into stock. What the main warehouse? Which location? Uh, how many? Okay, so it's saying that I've got 31 in stock. Yeah, so I'm saying that I found 10 under a particular shelf or whatever. So I'm putting 10 into stock. So now after this, I'll have 41. I could do more items if I want to. If I just save that, it's done it. Yeah, and it will also create a journal to say, obviously, we've upped the inventory control account. Okay, so let's do a stock take on the main warehouse. Okay, so I can decide to do a stock take for any particular location. I can also do a stock take based on overdue. So if I said I want to do a stock take every seven days on a particular item, and it's past that seven days point, if I just click overdue, it will just list the items that are overdue for a stock take. So obviously I want to stock take that every 10 days. And the last time I stock take it was the 27th of November. So it's saying you've got to stock take that one. Let's just do all locations. So we get all items on there. And let's say show values. It's saying, do you want to save this? Yep, I want to save this. Okay. So then I can use this zoom button to zoom up the list. I can say, right, okay, the quantity that I found there was 51. Um, the quantity I found there was zero. And the quantity I found there was 40. And I didn't find 39 there, I only found 30. So what happened is, it's going to put some differences on here. Yeah, it's going to do some adjustments in and out Yeah, when I actually save this. So if I first save this, okay, it's going to say to me, do you want to complete this? It's not going to do any adjustments uh, in and out, okay, until I actually say yes to complete it. So I'm going to say no. OK, um, so I can come back to it and finish off the actual um, uh, stock take. OK, so if I go back to the stock, find stock take and uh, look, uh, open stock takes, which is the one I've just done. Uh, obviously, the one thing I missed was it, you can go into the print option and actually print off um, uh, the actual stock take list, you know, with the stock take and the locations and everything else. And you can do it by bin, or you could do it by you know, warehouse, or you can do it by item. So what you could do is you could just stock a, a, take a particular item across a warehouse or a particular bin or location. 
Okay, so when I kind of launch this one up, there's my values that it already I already did. And if I say save and close now and complete, it will actually do the adjustments in and out for me as well and complete that stock take. So now it's part of a stock uh, a closed stock take rather than an open one. Um, okay, internal movements. This is for moving stock around. Um, uh, you know. Uh, from location to location so if I kind of pop up the form you can see you pick a particular uh, item let's say that one there um, I'm gonna say from uh, in each that's the locations we've got it tells me what I've got at each location it'll only let me move stock that I do have yeah um, so if I say I'm gonna move one to location two one thing to note as well is um, all these um, uh, little red circles that come up um, there, if you actually hover over them, it'll tell you uh, what the actual uh, issue is, and it won't let you save it unless you've actually solved the issue. Okay, so this is going to move one, yeah, to look from location one to location two. Okay. Um, all right, let's let's uh, let's do an assembly. Okay, so there's uh, our example assembly that we did. Okay, let's open it up, and I'm going to say that I want to create ten. Okay. So there's that red circle again. Let's just hover over it and it says build quantity is no value. Okay, well it does now. Okay. So what it's doing is it's saying you need 10 of that item. So it's 10 times 10 is 100. We've got 50 in stock and we're short obviously quite a lot. Okay. Now, by me saying save and save and close on this, it's going to take the stock regardless. Okay. It's not manufacturing. It's not allocate and then kind of create requirements the stock have not got this is basically very very simple you know it takes them out um, it's, it's it's almost uh you, you're you're back flushing you kind of you, you're just saying i want to take these components out very quickly and put this finished item in so i say save that's it done okay um obviously if i wanted to go back and have a look at that i could that's a build that i did and i created 10 of them Okay, um, stop valuation. Pretty simple. Um, if I expand this out so you can see it in more detail, this this is this is grouped by warehouse, by location, by costing method, by category. So I'm just going to dump category and costing method into the list, so I can see for in location one I've got so many of these. Uh, it's it's average costing method. Uh, the average cost is 15. Uh, I've got 76 in stock. 76 times the 15 gives us our £1,140. So total value of our stock is 75000 We've got a little plus button here. Yeah, and if we click on that, it'll actually give me all the individual GRNs, adjustments in, and all that sort of stuff that we've actually got, that actually put stock into stock, and the actual cost prices that, actually, uh, that, that, that there were. So if you're running this on a FIFO basis, yeah, the FIFO value of this, uh, these items is 113270 yeah so if that was a FIFO costed item it would actually be showing that value there rather than the quantity times the average price and if it was a standard costed item it would go quantity times the standard price regardless of what's here and what's on the average okay profit analysis so uh, one of the things over here is the filter criteria so you can decide to do this by item by customer by category by warehouse but you know by date range whatever you want so let me just expand it out a bit so you can see it a bit better this is sales by customer, by category, by item. But if I just kind of dump the item code in here, dump the, the, the category, well, I'll leave the category there. So I can see for Mr. French customer, okay, I've sold some Western Digital Drives. Okay, well, I've, I've sold some Western Digital Drives, five of them there. The sell price was £11.61. The extended sell price, which is obviously 11 times the five, is £58. Okay, and I can see across here, that the cost price was 14, the extended cost price was that, the gross margin was that, okay? So you can see how much I actually made or lost by customer, uh, by item, by category if I wanted to. Um, <clears throat> that was a bad example, but let's try and pick something that this actually does make a profit out of. But you know, still valuable information. If you're making a loss on something, you wanna know. Okay. All right, pricing. Now, essentially we have a wholesale and a retail price. Okay, um, and these can be set up actually in the item, yeah, or you can do it in its entirety. So I'm looking at the wholesale price across all items here, or if I look at this individual item, okay, I could set up the actual price just for this particular item in the actual item itself. Okay, so let's look at this. 
Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so we've got pricing method, pricing cost, amount, and selling price. So if I change this price to 10, okay, and this one to 20, okay, with the, the tick apply to all currencies, okay, it will apply it to all the other currencies. So if I, go, so if I click down here and go onto the, Euro, the, let's say the dollar one, you'll see that it's gone to 18 and 36. Let's just use the exchange rate. Okay, and if I untick this, okay, and change that to $10, I say $19.99 and this to $39.99. Okay, when I look back at the UK one, it will have kept it at the 10 and 20. Okay, but if I go back to the United Dollar, the dollars one now, and I say apply to all currencies and type in I don't know, 18 pound, 19, okay, 29 pound, 29 dollars, sorry, and then say go back to the, uh, the United Pounds one, you can see that it's changed it by the exchange rates backwards. Okay, um, so this is an easy way to edit the actual uh, wholesale price and you've got exactly the same situation with the retail price. Okay, so if you look at the price lists, okay, so we can create as many price lists as we want. Okay, so I've got a standard one set up here, but let's, let's create a new one. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, example. Okay. I'm going to call this example and it's going to be in GB pounds. Okay, so I'm going to pick some items. Okay, so you can pick as many items as you want or as few as you want. Okay, so I can type the price in here. It's exactly the same as I would set up a customer price or a supplier price list. Yeah, but I've got more options here. So if I said here I wanted to make that, you know, five pounds or whatever it is, I could change it there. Or I could drill down to see the units of measure and actually change the units of measure cost prices and put quantity breaks in. Okay, so if I wanted to say, right, if they buy one to a hundred, okay, I want to charge them 10 pounds. And if, I, if they buy a hundred to 200, I want to charge them nine pounds. And if they, pay, if, they, if they buy over 200 and one, then I want to charge them eight, okay? And that's how you do quantity breaks, if you want to. So you can make it as simple or as easy, uh, as hard as you want. Now, another way of doing price lists, um, which is common among people, is that you may want to um, export your price list or import your price list. Okay, so if I export this price list I've just done, okay, um, and let's say edit it. So if I insert, um, well, let's, say, let's say copy and insert, the copied cells there. And I'm going to put another quantity break in here. So I'm going to go 300, and then I'm going to go 301 to 999. And I'm going to change this cell price to 7, and I'm going to save this. Save as. Let me come out here, look at this. I'm going to call it book one. Save. And I'm going to come out of there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this price list. Uh, do you want to see that? Okay. Yep. So. C drive, book one, open, what currency? So I'll say OK. And now what happens is if I look down at this item, I should have, hopefully, another unit of quantity break in there with seven pounds on it. What it means is you could export your prices, change them, bring them back in, um, or you could, you know, um, do whatever you want to do, really. OK, so I'll say come out of there. Okay, so uh, we also have what's called discount bands. So it's an additional complication on top. But so let's say you kind of have a wholesale retail price. Um, you can then have a price list. But on top of that, you can also have uh, band discounts. So you can so for, so for example, this is a, a standard band discount, and for for memory, for items that are in memory, you'll get an extra one point three percent discount. So you can specify the categories. Yeah, and then specify additional discounts that they'll get on top. Okay, all right. So that really covers stock. Um, I'm going to show you a bit uh, the obviously the reports. It's very similar to the other areas. You can see the previews. Um, you know, day books in and out, goods received, all that sort of stuff. You got report generator, um, but the business intelligence. Okay, so you can see your best selling item lines. OK, uh, your slow moving item lines, uh, your top returned items, 
um, and your stock valuation for the last seven days, the last 14 days, the seven days before that, all that sort of stuff. So you can see that, is my stock going up um, in value uh, or is it going down in value or is it saying roughly static? Um, and obviously for this, your slow moving items, you can expand it out. You can actually have a go and have a look at each individual one and say, well, why, you know, why is that slow moving? Why would you sell six of those or whatever? Okay. Um, that's basically inventory. Thanks very much.